Hello and welcome back to the Asian game. Alex here coming to you from Urawa Komova Stadium. And there we have it. The AFC Women's Championship Cup is, uh, is finally at an end. And it's Urawa who emerged victorious with a 2-1 win over uh, Hyundai Steel Red Angels uh, here in Saitama. Yeah, so the game itself, I thought it played out quite quite well, quite a good advertisement for um, for continental football within the women's game here in Asia. Um, started out with uh, Hyundai came out pretty strong. Actually, they they seem to really have Reds' number. They're very well organised in defence. Um, their off the ball movement was very good. Uh, Reds simply just could not play through them. Um, Hyundai very good with the press, very good at recovering the ball and then linking uh, from defence to attack uh, in an instant. Um, so that was something for me. I from from watching Urawa quite a lot. Uh, I thought that was kind of new to them. That it was a new style of play that their opponents uh, imposed on them um, in the early stages. Um, and this really kind of came to fruition um, early on when when Hyundai took the lead. Um, it was a very poor goal for, for Reds to concede. In in all honesty, uh, centre back uh, Nagashima. Uh, she she played a very kind of risky pass to her centre back partner. Uh, Rion Ishikawa. She should have just gone back to uh, back to the keeper or, or, or hoofed the ball clear. Um, but she was under pressure from one of the Hyundai attackers, who, who really kind of um, was very close to her. But she should have, you know, should have gone for a safer option there. She didn't. She went for a very risky option. The Hyundai attacker uh, latched onto it um, and then took the shot uh, from range. It should be said, but there was enough quality on the shot to, to get it past uh, Reds keeper Sakiko Ikeda. Um, Hyundai one nil up in the early stages, but it was short lived. Um, Reds got back into the game quite quickly they had the tails up they found a way through they seemed to settle into the game um, and then the first goal came from who else uh, Kiko Seike current top scorer in the Wii League and I think she gets the golden boot here for, for this tournament as well I'll have to double check that double check the facts when I get home um, but she's looking good for the Wii League golden boot as well she scored tonight leveled the scores uh, and from then Reds kind of got a foothold in the game and were in the ascendancy um, and they took the lead just moments later I think it was just four minutes later as well at uh, the 20 26 minute mark um, from a corner, Shio, um, Shio Koshi. Uh, she delivered the corner and it was uh, Mei Shimada who headed it past the uh, the Hyundai keeper to to, to put Reds uh, up 2-1. And then it kind of stayed like that. We went into the uh, to half time, came out second half, Reds dominated the ball, really didn't give Hyundai a sniff. It, it seems as though Hyundai were kind of like out of a, a plan B, it seemed. Um, they started well, um, but as soon as, as Reds got well to what they were, got used to what they were trying to do, um, they didn't really seem to have much of a response. Um, yeah, so so Reds kept on creating chances, could have put the, put the the game to bed. They had a few a few chances laid on to make it three um, one, a, a memorable one from Seike again um, off a cross. Uh, she kind of skied it over the bar. A volley could have done a little bit better because she had the time and space, but still, um, Reds were still in front and creating chances thick and fast. Not much come in the way of of Hyundai, it should be said. Um, and then the full time whistle goes two one. Uh, Reds were victorious. The crowd was great. Five thousand, just over five thousand, were here at Comaba tonight. Um, often, usually for the Wii League games, we don't get quite that much. It's around one to two thousand at most, but a big crowd tonight. And it shouldn't be understated that this was a bit of an awkward fixture, given the short-term nature that the organisers had to, to set it up. Uh, the six o'clock kickoff as well uh, was not ideal. Um, a lot of people here in Japan and especially the Tokyo area still in work around that time, so it's hard to get across. But still, a good crowd turned out here tonight. Um, in what was quite a good display actually, quite a good advertisement as I said before for, uh, for continental football within Asia. Um, I think the argument or whatever concerns the AFC had that uh, maybe there's not enough interest, not enough of a, a potential audience here, audience uh, for, for the women's game here in Asia, at club level at least, that argument I think is now put to bed. Uh, their concerns can be alleviated here. Um, tonight is, is, uh, is an example, is a glimpse, a precursor to what we can expect. Uh, from the AFC Women's Champions League that's going to launch in, 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 in August. Um, so far, I think 22 nations have put the names forward. Of course, Japan and Korea, they'll be there as well. Um, so there's a lot of interest. Tonight was a good example, a good showcase event for that, uh, and a good, um, a good kind of insight into what we can expect uh, what, in what should be more prosperous times ahead for the women's game. All very exciting stuff. Yep, so this was a really good game. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Um, I'll be back with you, as we all will, on the Asian game with uh, updates and, and, and news on what's going on uh, within the, uh, the, the Asian landscape for football. Uh, so stay tuned. Please give this video a like and a share if you have not already. And I'll be back with you again soon.